Hello and welcome to this sort of pseudo maestro vlog video. Now this isn't going to be really covering any sort of my day to day stuff with this car or any progress on it really. In fact this might even be a little preview depending on when the grill and all the other video comes out. But I just wanted to touch on a few things since I've obviously owned it for about a month now. Wanted to just sort of share my experience. Of course at the end of all these videos there will be a massive main video coming out. You know with all the usual drone shots and all the magic etc etc so stay tuned for that and subscribe if you if you want to see that obviously but the main thing i saw i wanted to touch on is at this point in my ownership of this car i can make a, a solid judgment on whether or not i like it or i hate it or i love it and i would say i love it this thing has to be one of the best classic cars you can probably own especially under two thousand pounds because the community surrounding this the little maestros and the montegos is amazing maybe that might change when there's some money involved is my wheel off the ground maybe that that might change obviously when there's a bit of money involved in them there's already a decent amount of money involved in them anyway with most car communities you see them go to utter trash when there's money involved so an example yeah i'm not going to give any examples i don't want to offend anyone i can't be bothered with that but other than the 75 and zt community there is no other community that i've come across that is as good as the maestros maestro and montego community the way that everyone's so helpful everyone's not trying to fleece you etc etc the only that just makes the ownership experience of this car amazing it makes it it just that's what adds to it when there's a really good community around a car arch gap check aim check that is what really makes it for people and it makes it for me because when you've got people to bounce off and you can sit there and you know talk the way i do about them going oh that's adorable etc etc and people that call you stupid names work call you gay or whatever whatever you know all these things not like being called gay is an insult anyway but you know it really does it adds to the ownership experience and in this video i just wanted to touch on my experience so far with this think of it as a mini sort of review of what it's like to actually own the car i'm not going to drive it around and tell you about everything on the wikipedia page because that is boring I'd rather not do that. Wikipedia is is easy to search, but no offense to you if you enjoy making that or you enjoy watching that. But this is my experience of owning it anyway. And I think I might do it point of view. So let's go. So here you are, your point of view, your me in the maestro or you the camera on my forehead. So I just wanted to sort of talk about a few little things. Where are my keys? Here they are. A few little things that I've really enjoyed about owning this car, this wonderful little Austin Maestro. So I think the main thing about it is the simplicity, obviously. You can see I don't even have a Speedo. So yeah, that's how simplistic this is. We have our blowers. We have a heater that doesn't work, which is gonna get fixed. We have our wonderful Harry Moss radio, an aftermarket radio of the period. And we have things like obviously the Maestro badge that I mentioned many, many moons ago. But let's get a crank, let's crank it up. We've also got our wonderful Fuhr Orange in here. So let's get going. Now, first thing you're gonna notice is I'm on a very steep hill. So, we're going to see if we can actually get up the hill. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. That's another thing that I don't think, and this might be a little bit loud, so apologies, but people have been asking me for sort of a point of view video. So, we're just going to take a bit of a wander in Bradfield, which is a very nice part of the world. Well, part of South Yorkshire, anyway. I think it rates, it rates high, at least. But yeah, with this Maestro, one of the things that I have not enjoyed about owning it is getting it up hills. Now, in Sheffield, in South Yorkshire, wherever I live, who knows where I live, you basically have a million hills to deal with. So you're forever ragging it in second gear because that little 1.3A series can't really 
ack these hills for some bizarre reason. Maybe it's because it only produces in the, I think it's in the 50s or 60s of the brake horsepower, but yeah, that's the thing I, I don't like. But the thing I do like about that engine is it is incredibly simplistic and I love how he just goes flying around that corner and then nearly destroys the car. So another thing I really enjoy about it is the simplicity. I don't have to worry about a timing belt. I don't have to worry about anything like that with it being a little A-series pushrod engine. All I do is check the oil, make sure it's serviced, and I am having a laugh really, I'm having a good time. But it's not the most refined engine when you're coming from a 75 diesel with an M47R in it, which is a very nice engine, or a KV6, or a C27A, or even my five cylinder Fiat um, Coupe 20 valve engine. But it is a pretty good engine. So I'm obviously in fourth doing 30, so I need to change. But yeah, I'm not really used to sort of peeing around with the gears this much, but I guess that's sort of the appeal of it to me. It's a very, it's very farmyardy in, in, in comparison to some of the other cars, but that's what I love about it. It's so simplistic and so, just amazingly it's just amazingly simple and you when you get out of work sometimes or you get out of college or university or wherever you whatever you do and you get into your little Austin Maestro and you you know you sit there with the choke on and it sounds like it's um it sounds like a swarm of bees or a flymo you know you're gonna attract some attention some people laugh at you which is pretty funny but then some people absolutely love it and that's the one of the other things I really enjoy is the reactions that people give you. So you have people obviously, oh I passed my driving test in a Maestro, I did this in a Maestro, I can remember I had a Maestro pickup for example, um, etc, etc. These There's people with genuine and ordinary memories attached to these cars that are of course ordinary in nature but extraordinary to listen to because obviously I haven't had those experiences, I'm just experiencing the Maestro now. So. Oh, mallard. <laughs> um, yeah, it's one of those things, I guess. You you get a lot of attention in it, and it's really weird because I thought I'd, I thought it would. Um, if this is what supercar ownership feels like, I don't want to sign up for that because football in the middle of the road. I don't want to sign up for that because you get sort of harassed, if you will, in in the maestro. It's all those new build houses all this yeah you sort of get a bit harassed in the maestro you're driving down for example um i don't know a random street somewhere and someone's like oh mate i love your car it makes your day sometimes but then other times it just really really just you kind of can't be bothered with it so you're just like thanks dude and you know that that's not exactly the worst thing to complain about but the other thing is the negative attention i get which i'm getting a little bit sick of but who cares? I, I'm. I can get. Ne I can act negative attention. I'm not. I'm not um, that phased by stuff. But this guy, even today, I was just literally just taking my wheel clamp off, and some guy drives past in a. I think it was a Sprinter, an 07 Sprinter, and goes, "Oh man, your car's right shit." And I'm like, "All right, cool, thank you." You know, like you can't really. You can't really win. I mean, look at that. God, look at that view. You can't really win um, with this car. You either get really negative, really positive. Just there's no in between. There never, there never is someone that just goes, "Oh, um, car," you know. And, and I think one of the other things that kind of annoys me as well is you get these people <laughs> that think you're like, "This isn't your choice to drive a Maestro." That I've been lumped into this Maestro because I can't afford another car, etc. But meanwhile, they're driving around in a. 2006 55 plate Vauxhall Corsa that's worth less than the Maestro or a Vectra worth about 700 pounds so that of course that's just a minor gripe I love how all of the issues with this car are external they're not you know they're not actually anything to do with the car or the community not that I've, I haven't come across anything to do with the community yet that's bad but there's nothing to do with the actual car itself that's actually peed me off the car's just doing what it is supposed to do, be, being a car, and it is, I think I really have, you know, I've sort of fell in love with the with the little thing. It's like a little friend, it's like a little weird little animal. It's a weird little dog. You know, I see it, um, 
you go out to it in the morning you put your key in turn it on obviously you don't do that to your dog that's a bit weird if you do that um comment below if you do that to your dog <laughs> please don't i'm joking but yeah you see it every morning it's like your faithful little companion you know you it'll get you places you do feel quite sorry for it i think that's another thing is it's just an incredibly misunderstood car so you feel incredibly sorry for it all the time you sort of relate to it because no human is truly understood are they so or fully understood you really do look at that porsche wow <laughs> yeah you don't fully nobody fully understands you and nobody fully understands the austin maestro so you really do sort of bond with it in that way. I think it's just incredibly quirky as well. This might have been incredibly ordinary way back when some of my viewers and in general, whoever's watching this video, people around the streets, etc., were young. But, you know, this, this to me is just incredibly quirky and incredibly, it's unexceptionally exceptional. If you, um, if you, um, if you think about it. It is really, really, really a good car. It keeps up with modern traffic to a certain point. It does absolutely scream on the motorway with it only having four gears. It's It feels relatively competent, obviously, as well. I wouldn't say I've ever felt that scared in it, although I do big it up for the camera and make out I'm super scared because it's incredibly fast and or incredibly scary. It is truly a really competent car and I, I absolutely think it's amazing sort of cruising around in it you you feel like a real oh, i wouldn't say you feel like a gangster in an austin maestro but i would say you feel quite um it's so it's weird it's, it's a weird feeling i can't you feel almost smug sometimes in it but maestro owners tend to be very um what's the word very humble it seems maestro owners are quite humble so the people, some of these maestro owners, they have cars worth about these incredible um, examples of these wonderful things with like 17,000 miles on them. And they, they sit there and they're like, oh yeah, Maestro, you know, it's got a bit of a bit of this on it. It's got a bit of that on it. You know, it's, but you know, it's this, it's just a maestro. And, and that's the, the thing I love really. You don't, with these things, they're just so underappreciated at the moment that You've got to be quite. You've got to be quite smart to appreciate him. If you just sit there going, "It's not an escort. It's not an escort. It's crap," then you're incredibly stupid and you're missing out on quite a lot. Because eventually, I think these things, along with the 75, which is the 75, in my opinion, is gonna is gonna go faster upwards than any other car within the sort of past 20, 30 years of British cars, anyway. And this the Montego and probably the 800 Coupe and the original 800 Fastback but the 800 Fastback is probably going to be worth as much as it's worth now for quite a while because they're not as significant really as most of the other cars that were produced especially obviously things like the 75 which was the last of the breed wasn't it but yeah anyway going out on a tangent there I really do enjoy this little thing even though people think it's a bit crap even though it doesn't have running lights it doesn't have central locking it doesn't have all these things that make a new car or any what mgzt mgz zr sorry um all these things that make a modern car cool hey look at that it's even got fog lights <laughs> lovely mgf miss mine even though it doesn't have all this stuff the simplicity is just amazing it really is it's such an amazingly nice car for for just pootling about in i really do love it it's been it's been an absolute pleasure to own for this past month or six weeks i can't remember but it's been all it's been a, it's been a it's been a bit so anyway thank you for watching keep watching remember to subscribe for more of this and if you want let's do a question what is the most popular miss what is the biggest misconception you've had about a car because i originally thought this was going to be a bit of a joke but here i am <laughs> and i absolutely love it so cheers guys and see you soon